Hello, Math 1050. This is Mrs. Bricky. Uh, this is section 4.2 on exponential functions. We have five topics. Um, so the first topic is about evaluating an exponential function that models a real world situation. So in this topic, um, they will give you a scenario and they will give you an equation. And it's your job to evaluate it for two different um, values of t. Uh, in this case, it may just tell you both of the t values. Here's one of them, t equals 80. Um, but one thing to watch out for is if it says find the initial amount. Um, if you do get one that says find the initial amount, that's talking about t equals 0. Um, your equation might look like this one, or it could look like uh, something slightly different with an exponential as well. So just whatever your function is, um, this is just about evaluating, which just means we're subbing in um, for our t value. So let's find a of 0 first, our initial amount. That's 725 multiplied by 1 half to the power of 0 over 30. And you can calculate that in your calculator. Um, if you're not sure how, just let me know in class and I can help you. Um, so if we calculate that, we get that the initial amount is 725 grams. Now that answer was a whole number. Um, always try to pay attention to your rounding statement. This says that if we do have a decimal answer, we're going to round it to the nearest gram. Uh, we also need to calculate A of 80. That would be 725 multiplied by 1 half to the 80 over 30 power, which gives us, whoops, which gives us 114.18. So if I round it to the nearest gram, that would be 114 grams. Okay, so um, for our next few topics, we're going to need some, uh, at least one of the formulas from our 1050 formula sheet. So on the formula sheet, you should notice a section where it says interest. That's what we're going to be using for this lesson. Um, if P dollars are invested or borrowed at an annual interest rate R for T years, then the simple interest is I equals PRT, and the future value compounded N times per year is a equals p times 1 plus r over n to the nt power. Uh, and then in a minute, we'll use this future value compounded continuously, a equals p e to the rt. So that is on your formula sheet. Um, so one thing that is um, really specific to math 1050 um, is that we are compounding annually or compounding each year. And if you are compounding annually or compounding each year, n is 1. We're compounding one time per year. So this um, base right here ends up just being 1 plus r, and the power just ends up being t. So on your formula sheet, though, it has the n. So you that's why I leave it here with the n. Um, the n is 1 for Math 1050 in every single example I've ever seen. So uh, this in this topic, Intro to Compound Interest, um, it will give you some information. It tells us that Donna is borrowing $8,500. That's our principal amount. Uh, her interest rate is 6%. We want to use the decimal form of that, 0 0.06. Um, compounded each year tells us that N is 1. Assuming no payments are made, we want to find the amount owed at the end of year one. So this would be t is equal to one. And it also wants us to find the amount after two years. So t is equal to two for the second one. Um, so our equation looks like 8,500 multiplied by one plus 0 0.06 to the power of t. So for this first part, A, T is going to be 1, which gives us uh, $9,010. Um, this says do not do any rounding. 
Uh, and then for the second one, we're going to sub in a 2 for the power. And so in that case, we get after two years, it would be $9,550.60. Again, it said do not round, so I put in my full answer as is. Okay, the next topic is uh, sometimes very similar to what we just did, um, but it also has some variations, including some decay and some scenarios that are slightly different. Um, so this first one is really, really similar. Uh, the amount borrowed is $21,000. The time frame is 12 years. The interest rate is 5%. And it asks us uh, to calculate how much, how much would have to be paid back at the end of that period. So the accumulated amount would be 21,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 to the power 12. And if we calculate that, it does tell us to round to the nearest dollar. So the amount would be $37,713 if we round to the nearest dollar. So, I mean, my calculator is displaying this. So I would round to uh, 37713 uh, so here's a scenario that's slightly different, but we can use the same formula. A certain forest covers an area of 1,900 square kilometers. That's our principal amount. Um, each year, the area is decreasing by 8.25%. So our R value here, because it's decreasing, is negative. And then it asks us what the area will be after eight years. So that's our T value. So uh, it works just like compound interest, but if it's decreasing, the rate will be negative. So our, whoops, our accumulated amount A is equal to that principal amount 1, uh, and it is plus R, but the R is negative, so 1 minus 0 0.0825 to the power of 8 years. Uh, remember, again, in 1050, that N is always a 1. So 1900 times 1 minus 0 0.0825 to the power 8 years. So this tells us that after those 12 years, oh, sorry, after the 8 years, um, the forest would cover 954 kilometers. I rounded to the nearest square kilometer. Okay, one last variation to be aware of is uh, it'll have some come up perhaps that talk about half-life. So the half-life of an isotope is the time it takes to reduce to half its initial amount. Uh, starting with 165 grams, how much will be left after four half-lives? So the T is four here. Um, the rate, because we're talking about half-lives, the rate is that it's decreasing by 50%. And so you kind of have to know that that's what half-life means, is that it's decreasing by 50%. So our R value is negative 0.5. So the amount, accumulated amount or future value is 165 multiplied by 1 minus 0.5 to the power 4. which gives us 10.3125, rounding to the nearest gram, that is 10 grams. Okay, we just have two topics left. Um, the first one is called using a calculator to evaluate exponential expressions involving base E. Uh, essentially, we are just making sure you know where that E button is because we are going to be using it in a second. So you can type this expression into your calculator, making sure to be careful about any negatives and making sure to get the decimal in the correct spot. So for this first one, it's 143 point round to the nearest thousandth, so 563. And e to the 0.4 power is 
four nine two if we round to the nearest thousand so if you're not sure how to use your calculator to evaluate this let me know so i can help you figure it out all right our last topic is finding the final amount in a word problem on continuous exponential growth or decay so we've been doing exponential growth and decay this whole time the difference here is continuous exponential growth or decay if you see that keyword continuous in your problem, you are using this other equation, which is the correct model for continuous growth. Um, so it has a base E. In, in some ways, it's similar to what we've been doing. Uh, principal times that base E to the power R times T. Uh, again, if it's decay, that's going to be a negative rate. Uh, so this is bacteria in a population that are increasing. Uh, according to a continuous growth model at a rate of 3% per hour. So our rate is 0 0.03. Uh, suppose that we have an initial population of 879 bacteria. Find the population after 4 hours. So our equation is 879 times e to the power 0 0.03 multiplied by 4. And again, this formula is on your formula sheet. Um, just make sure you know where to find it on the formula sheet. And the keyword is continuous. Okay, so after, uh, after those 4 hours, we would have 991.1 bacteria. And it did tell me to round to the nearest tenth. So watch for those rounding statements. Okay, last one. I wanted to do a decay one as well on this topic. So you will probably see a mixture of growth and decay problems. Um, this time we've got a mass of radioactive substance following a continuous decay model. Uh, the sample has an initial mass of 528 grams. So that's our p-value. Uh, the Rate of decrease is 14% per day. So our R is negative 0.14. And we want to multiply that by our time, which is two days. 528 multiplied by E to the power negative 0.14 times 2 gives us, uh, it says round to the nearest tenth, so that would be 399.1 uh, kilograms. So it is decaying, so we would expect to get a smaller number than we started with. We started with that 528 kilograms. Um, so after two days, we would only have 399.1. All right, so that is it for section 4.2. Thanks so much. Let me know what questions come up.